Hi, I'm Mario. Um, I lost track about our lesson last week. Can you help me? Sure. Oh, I'm Christine, by the way. And I'm Maisel. Hmm. To help you remember your lesson, I think we need to use our magic puzzle. A puzzle? Yes, a crossword puzzle. All you have to do is find the words, and the puzzle will lead you to your destination where you can find the answers to your problems. That's cool. I'm down. Okay, so let's start. I hope our friends out there could help me. Help me find these words, guys. Yay! I found the first word. Now let's move forward to the second word. Oh, here's the second one. It's quite easy to find. The word interaction can be found here. The fourth word seems challenging, but here it is. Negotiation. Can you find the word process? It's here. The next word is located here. I can seem to figure out the next word. Can you help me? Oh, here's the word teacher. Hmm, I feel like I already saw the word students. Oh, here it is. Finally, the word impressions can be found here. Now that you've completed the task, let's start knowing what these words are all about. Good day everyone! Today, we will discuss the long interaction hypothesis. Before anything else, let me introduce to you the reporters. For the basic tenets and implications to learning and teaching, I, Maisel Joy Dolor will be the one to discuss it. Miss Christine Joy Kagara will give you the features and examples and the group's impressions about the topic. And Miss Marielle Garay will be the one to discuss about the synthesis and share about the teachers and the learners' roles in the second language acquisition using the long interaction hypothesis. After the lesson, Everyone is expected to define and explain what is the concept of long interaction hypothesis, to determine the roles of the teachers and students in the second language acquisition through the long interaction hypothesis, and to identify the implications of this theory into teaching and learning. So now, who is Michael Yulong? Michael Yulong was an American psycholinguist and a professor of second language acquisition at the University of Maryland College Park. He authored The Role of the Linguistic Environment in Second Language Acquisition in 1996, and he was the one who introduced the interaction hypothesis, a theory of second language acquisition that places importance on the face-to-face -face interaction. So now, we will discuss about the basic tenets of the Long Interaction Hypothesis, or the LIH. The Long Interaction Hypothesis is a type of theory proposing that one of the most effective methods of learning a new language is through personal and direct interaction. This theory highlights the importance of interaction in the process of language acquisition. Without having much face-to-face -face or direct interaction, the second language acquisition or the SLA is believed to be not that successful. Similar to Krashen's input hypothesis, the long interaction hypothesis was developed from Long's work entitled Input, Interaction, and Second Language Acquisition wherein he explained that input alone cannot make the SLA effective since the acquired language cannot be practiced and developed without the process of interaction. Now we have here the figure that shows the process of SLA through the long interaction hypothesis. So as you can see, the process starts with the input wherein the second language learners or the SLL are exposed through various sources. It may be in a form of conversations, lessons in grammar, and vocabulary provided by the target language speakers. After hearing the inputs provided, 
it will proceed in the process in which the second language learners digests and processes the inputs they acquired. While the output or the interaction stresses the importance of practicing and speaking to retain and further understand the input language. After so, learning and SLA happen. As you can see, the SLA through the LIH is a step-by-step -step process starting from the input to the processing of information and to putting all the acquired ideas into practice such as having a conversation. So in summary, the combination of input and output is highly given importance in this theory as it is believed that interaction is not only the means to study the language but also a way for learners to put what they have learned into practice to make the second language acquisition effective. Now let's proceed with the forms of interaction hypothesis namely the strong and the weak forms. The strong form refers to the form of the interaction hypothesis wherein the interaction itself contributes to language development. It is where the exchanging of conversations became a vital role in acquiring the second language. So the weak form, on the other hand, is the way learners find learning opportunities without putting the learnings into practice and without making productive use of them. In short, they just learn, read, and listen to the speakers without giving much attention to their meanings and without giving much clarifications about it. The SLL or the second language learners are passive. So now, Ms. Kagara will give you the features and examples of the long interaction hypothesis according to its types. The first type of interaction is the interaction as a textual activity. This refers to the modification of one's speech phonologically, morphologically, lexically, and syntactically in order to maximize chances of mutual understanding and to minimize instances of communication breakdown. Studies on interaction as a textual activity shows that the interactional modifications help learners become aware of form-meaning relationships. In other words, internalization of target language data is the result of learners' interactional effort to make a relationship between form and meaning. So, as you can see on the screen, I presented the figure on the adjustments of input during the negotiation of meaning. Long believes that when meaning is negotiated, input comprehensibility is usually increased, and the learners tend to focus on salient linguistic features. The figure shows how input is adjusted during the negotiation of meaning, and it clearly depicts the importance of input in learning acquisition. Learners need opportunities to interact with other speakers and to work together to understand each other's messages. Linguistic and linguistic adjustments play a huge role in language acquisition, and taking part in interaction can facilitate second language development. There are also ways to avoid communication problems through conversational tactics such as classification requests, confirmation requests, comprehension checks, and repetition. Comprehension checks occur when a native speaker ensures that the learner or the less proficient speaker has understood the message by asking the learner questions such as, Do you understand? or Am I clear? A clarification request, on the other hand, is when the learner or the less proficient speaker doesn't understand something and asks for a clarification. Repetition occurs when the more proficient speaker repeats some part of the sentence. And lastly, in a confirmation request, it is when the learner wants to confirm the statement or the sentence of the speaker. The second type of interaction is the interaction as an interpersonal activity. It considers interaction as a social practice that shapes and reshapes language learning. It also involves just about anything in regards to interacting with others. Those interactions can be both verbal and non-verbal. There are also skills that you can use to improve situations where interacting with others becomes difficult. 
And lastly, interpersonal skills are important for communicating and working with groups and individuals in your personal and professional life. The third type of interaction is the interaction as an ideational activity. This refers to an expression of the participant's own experience of the practices, people, events, and objects of the real or imaginary world inside and outside the situated learning and teaching context. It is more concerned with the fact that language can be used to conceptualize the world. In other words, linguistic forms can represent our experiences. Ideally, the most effective type of interaction in the SLA is the interaction as a textual activity or by having a conversation, which is an idea derived from the discourse approach introduced by Professor Evelyn Hatch. So the interaction hypothesis acknowledges that during conversations, there are certain situations wherein a participant does not understand what the other says but it is in these situations where learning becomes more effective. The theory refers to this occurrence as negotiation, wherein the participants will attempt to understand and repair the miscommunication during the interaction. To further understand the process of negotiation, we have here another figure. The process occurs in the interaction between the second language learner and the native language speaker. So the first step happens when there is a conversation between the two language speakers, then when the other participant does not understand a certain word, the speaker triggered negative feedback. When the negative feedback was spoken or presented, the speaker responds or paraphrases his statement that will modify the previous one to make it clear that it will make the other participant understand. Finally, if the other participant gives a reaction or any affirmative that he understood what the speaker was trying to imply, then the negotiation process in acquiring and understanding the second language is a success. For instance, we have here a conversation between the Filipino and the Spanish. So the Spanish man asked, what do you need this time? The Filipino replied, I need a ruler. So the ruler here is a trigger as it caused confusion to the Spanish man as he understood the word ruler as someone who lead or someone who rule. So the Spanish asked, a ruler? So his question is considered as a negative feedback as it seeks or as it asks for any clarification. So the Filipino replied, yes, a ruler, like for measurement. So his statement was an indicator that he modified, he paraphrased, and he changed his statement to make a clearer one so that the Spanish could understand what he is trying to imply. So the Spanish responded, Oh, a metric ruler. It's called a regla metrica. So his statement was an indication or a manifestation that he finally understood what the Filipino man was trying to imply. So the Filipino man reacted, Oh yes, a regla metrica. So his reaction or his statement is an affirmation that finally, the two different speakers finally understood each other. So the long interaction hypothesis really suggests an interaction between a second language learner and a native speaker so the learner can study the language in its most authentic setting without having or causing any confusion. Now, Ms. Garay will share to you about the teachers and the learners' roles in the SLA. Teachers play a pivotal role in a learner's second language acquisition. They are one of the sources in which a learner acquired the second language. To begin with, there are two hypotheses in second language acquisition, the input and output hypothesis. Let us first discuss the input hypothesis. Input hypothesis is a hypothesis in second language acquisition developed by Stephen Krashen. According to this hypothesis, the learner improves and progresses along the natural order when he or she receives second language input that is one step beyond his or her current stage of linguistic competence. 
In other words, interactional adjustments make input comprehensible and comprehensible input promotes acquisition. Thus, interactional adjustments promote acquisition. Additionally, Long stated that participation in conversation with native speakers, which is made possible through the modification of interaction, is the necessary and sufficient condition for second language acquisition. As we know, learners have different abilities and learning paces. It is important that teachers are to have a good mastery of the target language in order to make the new input more comprehensible for the learners. To make this happen, learners should be supplied with the input through the forms of reading, encouraging to listen in conversations, and having lessons on grammar and vocabulary. The role of learners, on the other hand, is to determine how to learn the second language in a manageable way. The output hypothesis stresses the importance of practicing and speaking to retain and remember the language. The interaction hypothesis combines both the input and output by stating that interaction is not only a means for a learner to study the language, but also a way for the learner to practice what he or she has learned. Learning a language is definitely not easy. The learners should find ways in order to learn the language easier. As a learner, what should you do? First on the list is to practice the language every day. This allows you to be confident in speaking the language to other people. It also allows you to retain the language and be familiar with it. The next one is to identify gaps in learning the language. The learner should be able to identify gaps in learning to identify what works and what doesn't. There may be lots of learning strategies, but if it's not effective for a learner, it will be more difficult for them to learn the language. Finally, Seek out to practice the language through native speakers. The learner can study the second language in its most authentic setting when having an interaction to a native speaker. In this way, the learner not only learns about the language, but also the nuances and other nonverbal cues that go along with the words. The theory's implications to teaching are as follows. Teachers having diverse sets of students may create or impose interactional activities that gives the learners an opportunity to interact with others and allow them to make use and share their native languages. Through negotiation, both teachers and students have the job to correct, clarify, and modify the unclear words so that the one they are talking to could understand them. While in the learning, Learning the second language is a two-way process as both participants in the conversation are talking, asking, and sharing ideas. So by having direct or face-to-face -face interaction, second language acquisition is much possible as both participants have the chance to ask and talk unlike just by reading and listening. Lastly, both inputs and outputs play a vital role in language acquisition most especially the output, as the learners are being able to demonstrate and use the acquired language with the direct assistance and guidance of the target language speaker. To conclude, I will be reading to you the synthesis of our presentation. The interaction hypothesis is a type of theory proposing that one of the most effective methods of learning a new language is through personal and direct interaction. Input is an oral and or written corpus of the target language that the second language learners are exposed through various sources. It may be in a form of conversations and lessons on grammar and vocabulary. Output or the interaction stresses the importance of practicing and speaking to retain and further understand the input language. Finally, the combination of input and output is highly given importance in this theory as it is believed that interaction is not only the means to study the language but also a way for learners to put what they have learned into practice to make SLA effective. So that's what those words mean. Hmm. Now that Marielle remembered their lesson, I hope that you also learned something. Oh, before we end, someone will tell us our impression about this topic. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Bye! 
The topic was broad so we find it somewhat difficult to understand since we really need to familiarize the concepts. It took us time to understand each concept, most especially the figures, since we need to familiarize it so that we could clearly explain it to the class. Aside from that, what made the creation and understanding of this paper easy was the collaboration between the members. The long interaction hypothesis was honestly new to us and we didn't have any background about it, so we're honestly enlightened about the role of interaction in second language acquisition. We have learned that direct and face-to-face -face interaction really do important in this theory as SLA will only be effective when the inputs or learning acquired throughout the process was put into practice. To encapsulate, this topic is indeed important to be tackled most especially in our course as it does not only explains how the long interaction hypothesis works but it also educates us on how the interaction plays a big role in having a better way of communication.